working uh, to continue the extraction uh, of the crew from the Soyuz vehicle that landed upright, the TMA-15, that's the descent module, the uh, section of the uh, three-section Soyuz spacecraft that uh, survives uh, the reentry, parachute-assisted landing. And now we have a, a slight revision to the landing time. The landing time now uh, reported uh, by the uh, Russian flight director at the Russian Mission Control Center as 1.15 and 34 seconds a.m. It was first reported uh, at 1.17, but again, the official landing time now uh, reported by the Russian flight director at 1.15 and 34 seconds a.m. Central Time, 1.15 and 34 seconds p.m. at Kazakhstan. You're now uh, watching the extraction uh, of uh, the crew from the Soyuz TMA-15. Again, a uh, rather methodical process uh, to help the crew out of uh, the Soyuz vehicle. Again, uh, feeling the first effects of gravity after 188 days of weightlessness. That's Bob Thirsk from the Canadian Space Agency, the flight engineer, wrapping up uh, his six months in space. This is uh, a, a normal procedure uh, for a Soyuz vehicle that lands uh, in an upright position to essentially extract uh, the crew member, place them in uh, what amounts to a, a stretcher, uh, that uh, enables them to be carried down to, uh, in this case, uh, to be placed in the all-terrain vehicle. As usual, uh, there is, uh, when, when there is a typical landing operation involving helicopters, uh, the crew will have a chance to spend uh, some time uh, in reclining chairs to acclimate themselves, but in this case, uh, to expedite uh, their return uh, to Arkalik. Uh, in the all-terrain vehicles, uh, they were simply placed on uh, stretcher-like devices, and uh, as you saw in the case of Bob Thirsk, uh, uh, duplicating uh, what uh, occurred uh, with the extraction of Commander Soyuz Commander Roman Romanenko just a few minutes ago, uh, they are placed on these uh, stretcher-like devices and then simply slid into the all-terrain vehicles uh, for the ride uh, of about uh, 80 kilometers uh, back to Arkalik. To recap, uh, the um, no helicopters at the landing site uh, this time uh, because uh, they were all grounded uh, because of the uh, inclement uh, weather conditions, the icy conditions uh, prevalent today, both in Arkalik and in uh, Kustanai, uh, the typical staging areas uh, for the uh, MI-8 helicopters. 
as a result uh, the recovery operations uh, were staged uh, in all-terrain vehicles, strictly a ground-based uh, recovery uh, that the uh, Ros Aeronavigatia search and recovery teams rehearse. In this case, uh, the Soyuz capsule, as you can see, the descent module landed upright uh, because of the lack of wind in the area. You can also see how frigid it is uh, uh, by the apparel uh, being worn by the recovery team members. You can see on the far right of your screen uh, the all-terrain vehicles uh, uh, two of the crew members, Roman Romanenko, was first out of the Soyuz, followed by Bob Thirsk, the Canadian Space Agency flight engineer. And uh, we uh, will be standing by uh, to watch as uh, Frank DeWinna, who was uh, the first European Space Agency commander of the International Space Station for a six-week period, and uh, the flight engineer and the board engineer for today's uh, descent and landing in the TMA-15. He'll be uh, extracted uh, shortly, placed on that flat... Uh, a stretcher-like device and uh, simply carried a few feet into the all-terrain vehicle uh, for the uh, ride back to um, for the ride back uh, to Arkalik. Uh, it is uh, not clear at that point uh, uh, when uh, the uh, crew members would take off in the helicopters back to Kustanai, uh, where the uh, Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center aircraft is waiting uh, to fly uh, the three crew members and the support personnel back uh, to the Chukalovsky airfield outside of uh, Star City, Russia, the cosmonaut training base on the outskirts of Moscow. But uh, the more important uh, point uh, at the moment is that the crew is safe and sound. It was an on-target landing. Uh, the uh, all-terrain vehicles arrived on scene uh, very quickly uh, to begin the extraction of the crew. Uh, the deorbit burn was on time at 12.26 a.m. Central Time landing. The official landing time now revised uh, to 1.15 and 34 seconds a.m. Central Time, 1.15 and 34 seconds p.m. Kazakhstan Time, that the official time uh, that uh, was recorded uh, at the Russian Mission Control Center in Kuryov by the Russian flight control team. And uh, now you see uh, Frank DeWinna, the European Space Agency uh, crew member, completing his second landing in a Soyuz vehicle. He was on a, a Soyuz taxi crew in 2001 that delivered a fresh Soyuz vehicle to the fledgling International Space Station and its uh, crew on board. Uh, DeWinna uh, wrapping up uh, 199 days in space on two flights. He was, uh, again, the commander of uh, the International Space Station, the first European Space Agency commander of the station, being helped out by uh, the recovery teams. He will be helped on to that uh, soft stretcher uh, to be uh, carried just a few feet uh, to be placed uh, in the all-terrain vehicle, a wave uh, for the cameras uh, at the landing site. This video courtesy of Roscosmos from their all-terrain vehicle. And now Duenna to be brought uh, toward the all-terrain vehicle. Yes. 